Hey everyone! In this fifth installment of Face Fusion Basics, we're going to take a look at the Face Debugger. This is a super useful tool within Face Fusion to help you out with some issues you may be having with your face swaps. Just to be clear from the start, the debugger does not actually do anything to your swaps unless you leave it turned on when you render out your video. The debugger is there to give you as much information about your video and the current frame to help you adjust your settings if need be. You can use it with all of the other processors turned off to speed things up. So with only face debugger turned on, I'll drag in a clip to show you how it works and what it looks like. First off, probably best to not have all of the debuggers turned on at the same time. Let's turn those all off and start with one at a time. Here's the bounding box. This one couldn't be more simple. It's basically there to say, hey, there's a face here, and here's the general area that it's in. So either yes, it sees a face, or no, it does not see a face. That's the takeaway on that one. As for the four different face landmark debuggers, the 5 and the 68 are the important ones. Mostly you want 68 to be working and showing accurately on every frame. The harsher the angle, the more difficult or impossible it will be to pick up the 68 landmark points. Either way, there really isn't anything you can do to improve your situation with the face landmarks. It's just there to show you what your issues might be with certain shots. Be it that the angle is too difficult, or the lighting is terrible to the point where it can't see parts or all of the face. This is basics, so I'm not going to get into the weeds on this one. The face mask debugger is to actually show you the size of the mask that you can control with the face mask blur and face mask paddings. These are very helpful if you need a specific area of the face to not be swapped for some reason, and it happens more often than you might think. So you definitely want this debugger turned on while you're adjusting the padding. However, if you're using occlusion masking, it will instead show you the outline of the mask, though there are no settings to change at this point. However, you can use occlusion in conjunction with box. Now the face detector score can be very useful. The number it gives you is the threshold for when that face can actually be detected as a face by the face detector model. So if your score is something like 0.82, if you raise the detector score to 0.85, it will no longer be able to detect that face. This is where, if you are having trouble with flickering and a face not always being swapped, I would recommend rendering out the scene with only the debugger turned on and no swap. This way you can quickly watch the scene with the score shown and see if the score has any random drops. Whatever the lowest score is, you need to change the face detector score so that it is just below that number. That should help or completely fix the flickering. The face landmarker score is kind of a weird one. You want a higher score, as that basically means you have better lighting and are able to freely use the 68 point landmark. If your lighting is terrible, even part of the time, then your score will be lower and you'll need to use the five point landmark, resulting in not as accurate of face swaps. The last two are pretty obvious, but their accuracy isn't exactly the greatest. But age will tell you what age they are according to the detection, child, teen, adult, or senior. This can help you figure out your settings for the face analyzer age. And then the same goes for using the gender, either male or female, with the face analyzer gender. To repeat from earlier, remember that this is a tool that gives you information. And now you have the information that should help you know how to use it. There will be times that you may need to know the scores in order to select the correct face, just as you may need to know what faces are and aren't detectable. Or you may need to select a face based on the other analyzers. Or maybe you need to set up a face mask accurately. All of the information that these debuggers give can help you with these issues. Every video is different and you'll run into many random issues but hopefully this should help you be able to figure out what the problems may be. And remember, turn off the face debugger processor when you're ready to do the render. Otherwise, all that information will show up in your output. I hope you found this video helpful. I'd appreciate it as always if you'd like and subscribe and please leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.